Let's take a further look into this cup. And remember that the fractal will reveal all. If you don't understand what the fractal is, remember to watch the video series. Ye shall know them by their fruits. It's all the way down at the bottom or the beginning of the playlist. The fractal will reveal all. We've seen one simple reflection here shown to us. The connection to the redhead, of course, which is the propaganda. You know, who understands this uh, about the redhead? Well, obviously, it's the descendants of Jacob. More importantly, those that feel they're the most blessed, and that would be the descendancy of Ephraim, which we know represents this mystery, Babylon, in the fullness. In the fullness. So... It is their interest, it is the interest of ecclesiastical Babylon to project this through the medium of commercial Babylon. Commercial Babylon is the agent showing the true intent of this propaganda. Once you understand that, you know where it's coming from. Jacob is the one that is concerned with this deception against Esau, and which is exactly what you see manifested here. Now, when we're using this symbolism, we're speaking about the symbolism that is being used about the redheads. We're not really speaking about redheaded people in their entirety, at least to the populace of the United States. This redheaded people is going to fulfill, more importantly, symbolically, with what they produce as the dance, which will be this arrival of the locust, this fake ringer arrival of the locust that will fe feature tall redheaded beings. Okay, that's a part of the deception. We'll just have to talk about that later. Who is supposed to come and clean up these false beings, which they're already promoting to you as now, as false? You see, they're setting this up in the subconscious. Is supposed to be the Dan's, the white-haired, the true description of the Nephilim that we're going to look into. Some of these ancient accounts that describe them as having white, blondish hair. All right? That's who, that's how they're going to get you to, or they're going to try to get the masses, the populace, what remains to fall and worship these as the Elohim, as the gods, the gods of ancient Israel. And in all reality, they're not. They're the unjust judges that we find that Israel is, is unprepared for itself. And Jesus Christ, the spirit of truth is recorded saying, my people shall die because of lack of knowledge. They have grossly miscalculated scripture, grossly underestimated the spirit of truth and what this prophecy really is concerning them. We're gonna see this cup manifest that. That's right. I've basically said that the second cup is gonna turn on them. Jesus Christ says it. He who kills with the sword will be killed with the sword. We know that Ephraim is the one throwing the stone, but we see that the stone itself, the repercussion of that, is going to backfire. A reaction has an equal and opposite reaction. So if Ephraim is throwing the stone, its intended action is destroy the Gentiles. Well, it's going to have an opposite reaction. It's going to destroy Israel itself. If it wasn't for the purchase of Jesus Christ, it would. But we see Jesus Christ has already guaranteed redemption. Jesus Christ has already purchased the enemy, the very enemy that set him on that cross to destroy him. Jesus Christ gave his life for, and we see that they're going to be brought to a righteous judgment. But nonetheless, they're blind, and they're setting themselves up for a serious fall. This cup is going to show us that further reflection. Just wait for it, my friends. Wait for it. So, we do have perfect biblical reference, the words of Jesus Christ that will fully support what I'm going to show you here. Let's take a uh, further look here at the mirror that in the first instance we looked at it is saying mom. All right. It's actually saying another word phonetically too, which would need to be there if it was going to fulfill the fractal. And that would be womb. W O M. Remember, the B is silent. 
Okay, and that's very interesting. I say that because, of course, the B, the Dan's are silent. They're sealed. Nonetheless, phonetically, we have the W O M. Is this sacred feminine? Not all about the womb. It most certainly is. Is what Revelation's concerned with with this birthing, this woman in travail? Is it not all about the womb? Yes, it is. Incidentally, the two colors, red and blue together, represent the birth symbols of the womb. The red for the blood in this reflection, the blue for the water that's broken in this reflection. That represents the seal. And we see here that Wendy's is highly familiar with the unification, the simultaneousness of the red and the blue together. As we see, if you view the coded movie, Gangs of New York, absolutely, same thing there. Red and the blue. Remember, it's about bringing these two things together, but we see what results in it is a tumultuous birth of travail. In other words, tribulation. Now, this blood, also at the same time, the red is going to represent fire, and it's going to be manifested right here in front of you in one of the most unique ways I have yet seen myself. Incredible. So we have mom, which represents who the womb is, who they're propagating, who they're setting it up to deter the understanding with this feud that Jacob is deceptively putting on top of this descendancy of Esau, which now manifests itself as the entirety of the unlearned masses that they're calling the Goyim. Regardless of whether you got red hair or not, they are applying the symbolism onto you because they are saying that you are so stupid. In other words, you're a dumbite that you're basically living within the system and bowing down to it. That's how they're justifying and destroying you by you being blinded by the imagery that they're adhering to you. Well, that's deceptive once again. So they're, they're covering up what the real feud is between Jacob and Esau, which Jacob is the one perpetuating. The thing that they're covering up is, or what they're covering it up with, is pushing this back further and making you think this redhead descendancy now has something with the Nephilim, which they would be justified in destroying, correct? Because that's exactly what you see being reported in the Old Testament with the tribes of Israel being led by various kings, being told by their God to destroy every man, woman, and child, supposedly of these giant races. This is where the redhead links up to these supposed giant races, which will link up into a historical deception, which is going to link up to actual redheaded giants being found in the Americas in a not-too-distant time ago in our past that was connected with Indians, Native Americans destroying and finding a cave filled of red haired, tall giant like peoples. Well, if you understand correctly, this coincides with the timing that the, that the wars were taking place with Israel against what it believed to be the Goyim nations, which were in a sense now sending redheads on uh, Exodus. And some of these tall red headed giants came to the Americas to escape this. There's a major deception there because these red-headed tall giant people were not a descendancy of the Nephilim. <laughs> they were not. They, they are connected to the ancient Sumerians of 4,500, 6,800 years ago, but they're not the progeny of the Anunnaki. They're actually connected to the kingdoms of men. And we have some historical validation that we'll just have to show at another time. My point is, I'm giving you the variable aspects of where this deception is taking root and what the variables are that they're trying to destroy of the truth. Please pay attention. Please pay attention. So, of course, they're trying to adhere this back to this Nephilim descendancy. We're going to show the proof of it in the next video that it does not jive. So, of course, we would have mom being shown to you with this redheaded situation. Now we see in womb depicted to you this redheaded situation. Let's take a closer look at the O. And what would you find if you just got rid of the M and the other mirrored M or the W? However you want to see it, still telling you the same thing. We see the classic symbol for the devil's horns appear. Now, let's not forget that if what I've told you about the unification of the Don Key and the ogre representing the Onager as the symbolic 
uh, birthing of these ancient mighty ones, we would see the same things. There's we would see the same things. Once again, there's the two horns or the two antennae. And what did I tell you these two were a product of? The sacred feminine, which is gonna fulfill itself back with cow. Remember each and every one of these ancient goddesses expressed with fertility is symbolized with a cow, considered the great mother, which we know as the heifer, which Samson considers women to be himself. Samson, that great Danite, that great mighty man, that great mighty man. And now we see Shrek the ogre is showing the very same two horn or antennae. Now are not locusts supposed to have like antennae? And that would be the fulfillment further of just one more avenue of sight, all telling you the same thing, regardless of which way we look at it. If that's what you're dealing with, if you're dealing with the truth, it's gonna be consistent from every way you view it. And once you can see, their deception falls, plain and simple. Now that's not even the fullness of it. Remember that we've got something to show you here with this Shriek Shrek. It should blow your mind, it absolutely blew mine. We'll just have to get to that in the next video. All right, so now there's more to go here with this cup. I'm not gonna get into the freckles right now for astronomical symbols and the such. It's just too much information and I want to support what I speak about. Let's just try to keep this video simple at this point. The mom, the womb, the propaganda with the redhead. You're seeing it in reflections. You're seeing it now in the history between this Jacob deception against Esau, the very same deception now being symbolically applied to the masses using the symbol of the redheaded Esau. In other words, being the Edomites, being the Goyim, being the cattle, being the consumers. This is why you're eating things called ham burgers. Ham represents pig. They consider you earth pigs, which is exactly what Jesus translates through considering the Kabbalistic interpretation, Gematria interpretation, the numerical Hebraic code of Jesus will relate back to earth pig. It will relate back to empty. It's the very same war on Jesus Christ once again that they are seeking to apply to everyone that is not somehow realize their symbols and awakened as they would call it and come on to their side the dark side the force anybody that has not done that they consider you blind and they seek on destroying you so please once again it's not about redheads in general it's the symbolism and in the history the prophecy interpretation by fallen israel that's being applied to the masses this is being used as a way to describe this judgment and then to justify it. Please understand that. Now let's look what the spirit of truth is going to show us and see the greater truth that are going to fulfill themselves in the words of Jesus Christ. Let's look closely at this. Remember when we were looking at in Matthew in uh, the Wheat and the Terrors videos, the fractal that we did, the fifth mystery, the hid treasure, this is what revealed to us at verse 44, that number 44 is planning on going somewhere. They're going to that uh, field of dreams. In other words, which is that field of Sharon. They're going to Shinar. We see it's a little out of focus here. There we go. So again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field in which when a man hath found, he hideth. And for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath and buyeth that field. We found out the interpretation of that. We find out that this treasure is Ephraim. And that makes sense considering these lost tribes consider themselves to be gold. That fulfills the monatomic gold fractal. The field that we realize that they're going to is the moon where they're bringing all the worldly riches and luxuries to so that they can escape this supposed judgment by their own hand. Well, we see that the parable fulfills the same way, and it gives you different examples of this understanding. As we come back to the seventh mystery, the dragnet, listen closely. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind. 
which when it was full, they drew to shore and set down and gathered the good into vessels, but cast the bad away. So shall it be at the end of the world. The angels shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just and shall cast them into the furnace of the fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Jesus saith unto them, Have ye understood all these things? They say unto him, Yes, Lord. Then said he unto them, Therefore every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder, which bringeth forth out his treasure things new and old. Please retain this last portion here, and we're going to make a connection to the redhead James Holmes, as we just talked about that supposed killer with that movie theater coded about Batman. Please retain that. You should realize we've already spoken about this and this reveals what's going to happen. This division of the wheat and the tares is revealing who the true dark wheat is, who the true ergo is, who the true cancer is that is using all this cancer symbolism. It's this darkness itself. It's this Ephi of Zechariah 5 that then translates back to the remnant of Revelation 12. It's false Israel, the woman, Ishtar, symbolage of the goddess with her feet on the moon. That's who we see is uh, truly going to be tossed into the fire. But notice I said it's the woman, it's Ishtar. Okay, that represents the symbolism of that esoteric, occultic, demonic philosophy. It doesn't represent Israel itself, the people that are already saved, that have already been purchased. But it does record by the Spirit of Truth, even the words of Jesus Christ, that that demonic philosophy of the sacred feminine will be destroyed. That woman will be destroyed. That sacred feminine concept that denies all life is sacred not just this feminine concept of that supposed sacred womb of the fallen. Regardless, let us return. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind. So in essence, we're talking about fish. The mystery of this parable is revealing that eventually this bad at the end is going to be separated from the good and the ultimate bad which is revealed as the sons of perdition should be cast into the fire that's spiritually but we see that there's a material manifestation that is described that israel even out of the words of jesus christ is going to destroy itself it's going to suffer the repercussions of its own choices its own actions its own stone its own fire so in other words israel is going to bring a certain fire upon itself and we will see both the material and then the highest of the spiritual reflection fulfilled right here on this cup you see that they've encoded the entirety of everything they're talking about right here but once we flip this upside down we're going to see a different picture begin to develop let's see what's now being shown to you we have a fish this is its open mouth this is its eye, little scaly patterns. You can either see this as the gill, or you can see this as the enlarged gill. You follow the body down here, and now these words form the tail. We have a fish. Remember what Jesus described about the kingdom of heaven, about the bad being separated and thrown into the fire. Well, you're asking yourself, where's the fire? Well, now here's the fish being cast head on into the fire. That red fire symbol that you see that's so popular with explosives and what have you. Now the fish body is being cast into the fire. Notice what now the little pig tails turn into. Because remember, Esau is supposed to be considered the earth pig. Well, we see those racist peoples. They want to consider people pigs and justify burning and destroying and killing them. We see what this now manifests for them. It represents the bundles of the tares that were now cast into the fire. There's the very bundles of the tares. Once again, that infected wheat with that 
ergo, that ifa, that blackness of that dry measure of grain. And now we see the words at the top. Now they say, conveniently enough, wow. Absolutely, wow. Jesus Christ knows exactly what he's talking about. I'll be back. Next video will be even more intense, I should say. Thanks for listening.